Good morning, Keller Williams, and welcome back to the KW Command 66 Day Challenge 7.0. And today is day 32. So, yesterday we finished up the creation of our paid social ads. Today, we're going to look at direct mail campaigns and learn how to send out postcards to area or neighborhood based addresses. So, let's dive back into campaigns, the megaphone icon here, seventh one down. And from there, at the very top of the screen, you can see that we have a direct mail tab. Now inside the direct mail tab, again, our home screen is completely blank because we haven't begun a campaign, and yet we can do so by coming up to the Create Campaign button. Again, remember that this is another paid program. However, you don't necessarily have to have a card on file with Command. You're gonna pay Real Mailers, which is the company that we partner with for these direct mail campaigns. So let's dive in by creating a campaign and we're going to select direct mail as the campaign that we're going to start. Now, once again, we're asked to do a campaign name. So let's say we wanted to do maybe a just listed or a just sold campaign. We'll just do just listed. I'm going to put the address of the property and I'm going to put the date as well so that I know when we sent these postcards out or at least triggered these postcards to go out. So this would be basically to um, attract more listings or advertise a listing. Again, remember this is just KWRI purposes. So let's just choose advertise listing and create the campaign. From here, we are taken into the shell where we need to start building our actual campaign. So since we said we were gonna advertise a listing, we get this same drawer slide out from the left-hand side where we can go in and select a specific listing. So typically you would see your listing underneath the only my listing category, but in this demo account, we don't actually have any active listings. So we'll just go ahead and choose the first one here as an example. And now that we have named our campaign and chose our goal, we have chose a listing, chosen, selected. We selected a listing here. Next, we can go into the content dropdown. And here's where you're gonna decide what your postcard actually looks like. Now, Real Mailers has templates that you can use if you want to just send one out. Later on in the challenge, we're gonna talk about the designs applet and how you can actually create a postcard design. But since we haven't gotten there yet, let's go ahead and just use one of the Real Mailer templates. So you can see we're gonna select a template here mm -hmm. on the left-hand side. We're going to choose which template we want to use. And you can see that there are some that are four by six, six by nine, six by 11. Your cost will differ per postcard depending on what size it is, getting more expensive as the postcard gets larger. So right now we'll just stick with the four by six template. Next up, it asks us what the address is. So that's been pulled in because we selected the listing. It's asking us the listing price, which got pulled in based upon selecting the listing. It'll say, what's the status? So do you wanna do just listed, just sold or coming soon? We said we wanted to do just listed, so we'll select that. And you can see when we check that status, over here on the left-hand side, just listed is now selected. We've got the address here, and then you can see it asks us for bedrooms and bathrooms. Those are also showing up on the template. Next up, you've got the description of the home. This gets pulled in from the public description. However, you can see we only have 350 characters and we're currently at 489. So we do need to go ahead and reduce that character count. So if we take out this sentence about the three-story bedroom, um, let's say spacious living room, large family room, uh, this is already on here, so we can take that out. Um, let's see, we're at 366. We need to cut 16 additional characters. Um, and beautiful, so with three beds, we already know it's three beds, so let's take that out. Are we close? All right, when we get real close like this, here's a little trip pro tip that I like to use. Take the word and and change it to an ampersand, which is just above the, the number seven, and you can save yourself. And let's see, we're getting real close. All right, there we go, 348 characters out of 350, so we're good to go there. Next up, we can upload the listing photo. So that's gonna show up here on this template. Right now, we have not done that. So we can either upload a custom image or if we go to listing image, you can see that we can actually use the photos that are being pulled in from the MLS. 
So let's go ahead and select this one. Now, these are low res photos that are being pulled from this MLS. We're gonna go ahead and select it. Although typically you wanna make sure that you have a high res photo so that it shows really well on the postcard. You can see now that that photo shows up right here on the postcard as well. Um, it does get cropped just as a heads up. So maybe that's not the best photo because the cropping is a little weird. Um, and again, this is just kind of a, a photo that we're selecting from this actual listing. That one looks a little bit better, nice big backyard with a shed. So let's just say we're gonna go with that photo. Uh, next up, you've got your agent photo and you can adjust the cropping or upload and replace that one. You've got your first and last name, your email and phone number, just so you know all of that information is going to show up on the back. And you can see the preview here on the right hand side. If we change that, here's that description that we put in. Um, and let's see, let's go back to that content description. Even though it says 350 characters, I wanna take note. Do you see how it says come and then it cuts it off? Um, it looks like even though it allows us 350 characters, it's not showing that much on the postcard. So let's take out that last sentence. There we go. And this is why you always wanna double check your preview, make sure that it looks really good inside of the preview as well. So in reality, it looks like you really only have about 245 characters that you can use there. Um, all right, so we've got the listing photo, we've got our agent information entered, then we want to verify our market center address. So this is part of this process, you need to always click on verify address, and that's in 494. And you'll see, oh, it's actually 450, can't even remember my own zip code for my office, there you go. So it corrected the address, we're going to confirm that address, and you can see we get a check mark next to market center. Next up, you've got targeting. And basically it is dropping the pin where we would begin our targeting at the address of the actual listing. Now you can change that here and within the next screen, just as a heads up. You can also choose if you don't wanna do the X number of houses around this listing or a radius around this listing, the third option is to actually send out postcards targeting specific individuals in your database. So if we choose this second option, target my database, you can see that we can actually go in and choose specific contacts in our database. Remember we added Homer Simpson as Marge's husband, um, as a fake, you know, fictional character here. The reason we've got this exclamation point is that we didn't put in Homer's address. However, if we wanted to send this postcard to specific contacts in our database, we could do so. We could also say, hey, we wanna send this out to uh, only the people that have a specific tag. So we wanna send it out to just our cartoon characters, and then it's gonna select, I think we had four with that tag, right? So if you had tags around a specific neighborhood, maybe even leads that had come in off of an ad or something like that, and you were able to get their addresses, then you could actually target them with this direct mail campaign using that specific tag. So for right now, we're gonna go ahead and go back to local targeting so I can show you that, but do take note that you do have the ability to target specific people in your actual uh, uh, contacts database. Also take note, the nice thing is when you actually use specific contacts, watch how it shows up. I think it's gonna show the preview, it doesn't change it. Um, just as a heads up, when you target specific contacts, it'll actually have their name where it says current resident it'll show John Arbuckle, Peter Griffin, Sabrina Spellman, instead of current resident. When we do the local targeting, it is going to just say current resident. So budget down here, this is just a start. Right now you can see it said four because we targeted contacts. Um, if we go up to 100, it'll tell us that that's gonna cost us 68 cents per postcard or $68 in total. We are not locked in on this yet. Um, essentially the next screen is where we would choose the specific number of houses or confirm that. So let's go into configure targeting quickly. It's gonna say, hey, you got a low rose image, are you sure? I'm gonna go ahead and use that because that's what we have available right now. Uh, but you might wanna go back and fix that with a high res photo. Uh, depending if your photographer sent those to you, uh, you might wanna ask for high res copies of the photos as well. Now we are into the Real Mail program. So this configure targeting screen basically takes us into Real Mailers. Right now you can see that we put in 100 homes. So this pin is actually at the address of the property that's being listed for sale. And these blue dots 
represent the 100 closest homes to this property. You can see that we can put in some filters here if we choose to. Just be careful, a lot of times these filters are based upon tax records and tax records aren't always the most accurate. Um, you can change the number of homes you want to target. So let's say we wanted to do 200 homes. Well, there you go. Now you can see, right, that the blue dots are starting to show up. Let's say that uh, this property is actually in this neighborhood right here. And we don't necessarily want to target these homes over here or these homes down here, right? We just want to target all the homes in this neighborhood. Well, you do have the ability to draw boundary lines around what area you want to target. So if we click on draw, you can see that we can click and then drag. So right now I'm holding down my left mouse button and I'm drawing a line around the homes that I actually want to target. So you can now see that it has just targeted the homes inside of this particular little boundary line that I've driven, drawn. And it tells us that there's 149 homes inside the boundary lines that you just drew. And so to send out a four by six postcard to those 149 homes, it would cost us $101.32. I would always recommend sending a copy to the company address. That way you can get a copy of it to your market center. Make sure your DFI or whoever it is that's checking the mail knows that that's coming so they can set that in your personal mailbox and you can get an idea of what the postcard looks like. So finally, if you didn't want to target the homes, you can also use the radius tool. So if I choose the radius, basically I can click and then, hang on, let's get the radius tool. Oh, radius is already up. That's 200 homes in the radius. Um, again, we can do a polygon. That was the one I wanted to do. So if you do a polygon, basically you're just click, click, click. I'm sort of dropping anchors around the area that I want to focus on. So three different tools here on your top left that you can see. The radius tool, you decide how many homes. Um, the draw, you're going to draw the outline. The polygon is just a way to drop anchors, etc. If you wanted to change where this pin was dropped, this bar at the very top is where you would do that. So you could change the pin and then target different homes in a different area as well. Finally, on the next step, if we click on next, it's going to get a preview of what the front of the postcard looks like, what the back of your postcard looks like. It's going to tell you what the order summary is, and then it's going to ask you for your credit card and email information. Now you can see here on the bottom left, if you start a real mailers direct mail campaign through command and you submit the order before 3 p.m., the mailers will go into production that same day. If it's after 3 p.m., then it's going to be the next business day. Uh, UPS distribution, so it takes a couple of days to get it to the post office, essentially. And then another four to six business days for those postcards to actually begin arriving in the targeted mailboxes. This is important to note. I would probably recommend that you leave around 10 days, give or take, for your postcards to actually arrive. So 10 total days, not just business days. Um, so if you're doing an open house and you want to advertise it for this weekend, well, Saturday is five days away, six days away. That's not going to be enough time to get a postcard out. So if I was doing it for next Saturday and today is Monday, that would be enough time, right, to advertise an open house happening in two weeks. So just something to be aware of. Now, this is a just listed. If I do just listed and it's taking 10 days to go out, well, it's, it's kind of old in the market, quote unquote, by that point, too. So you might want to even consider sending out just listed postcards before the property hits the MLS, uh, maybe like three or four or five days before. That way the postcards are arriving just as the property goes live on the MLS. So some things to consider. And once you go through and put in your email and credit card number, it'll confirm the payment and your direct mail campaign will begin. That's it for today, guys. How to put together a direct mail campaign inside of Command using the Real Mailers program. As always, I hope you're all doing really, really well, and I'll look forward to talking to you again soon.